I'll give you a clue. It was Greensby. They are pressing quite well. What's happened there? You've got to be joking. Oh, sorry, no, I've done the wrong around. I've drawn an arrow. I haven't seen it. Sorry. He must have a horseshoe up his ass. <laughs> if we're playing on professional and that's happening for Barcelona. Um, uh, two years ago. Sorry about that. <laughs> that. I'm sorry, that's just put me off the game. I'm not having that. Anyway, segue, moving on. What has that got to do with football? Why is that at a football ground? Hello and welcome to the Honest Football Podcast, where we bring honesty back to the beautiful game. I'm Craig Savage and with me as always is Charlie Betts and Daniel Cody. On the show this week we have our EFL, non-league and FA Cup review as well as our usual features of story of the week and question of the day. So how has your week been guys? Uh, not too bad, I've had a trap nerve in my shoulder. Oh no. As as it's got, but no. Oh. no. I'll tell you what's happened this week Craig uh, and it actually involves you because I expect I'm going to get a bit of flack later on so I'm going to throw it out there. Uh, I remember one, of our, in between. One, oh. one of our earlier episodes, you had a massive rant about hashtag FC or hashtag United, whatever they're called. Agreed? Yeah. Do you remember that? About a YouTube team and basically, you know, the whole thing that goes around it. Didn't now, that start the granddad of football, didn't it? It, it did indeed, actually. Now, uh, you're obviously involved at Crawley Green FC, you're part of the committee and all of that uh, no, malarkey, yeah? So, team. Well, we manage, I, it is. I believe you called yourself a club legend, though. <laughs> yeah, you did, yeah. <laughs> so you're an integral part of the club, would you agree with that? Now, say. If you no, we're building you a statue if no one else. <laughs> if, you go on, if you go on their Twitter, uh, today there was a question asked, wasn't there, <laughs> which was, how would you feel, now bear in mind it's a what, step, what step are they, seven? Step, um, step five. Step in, five. In, in, the, in, the, in the non-league pyramid. Um, you know, how would you feel if we started to do some commentary for our games? Bear in mind that, you know, the average game is about 50 people if you're lucky, you know, that sort of thing. Maybe they just know that because they put their ticket prices up to seven quid, no one's going to watch. No, so exactly. <laughs> Now, I don't necessarily have, and I don't agree with it. I don't think they should be doing that. You know, it is non-league football, and I feel like it should stay that way. I don't want to watch videos of someone commentating. In the sense of, I'd rather go and watch the actual game, which we to move on to. Anyway, the point being, you slyly went on our Twitter account and voted <laughs> yes for it, despite two of that, the three of us, agreeing that we don't want you to go and do the... And not only that, he then went and accused us of doing the voting. <laughs> to try and deflect it from himself <laughs> hoping that one of us would just admit to it however I'm going to ask you a question now essentially what is the difference between your club Crawley Green if they were to start this commentary and YouTube videos and hashtag FC who if I remember correctly you had a 40 minute rant about uh, there's a bit of a difference I don't think there is 40, I think... 40 pre-edit we must say 40 pre-edit yeah <laughs> well to be honest we were here before them <laughs> 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 I think that is, in my opinion, great. great when that's how it starts. So that, my week has been quite boring until literally about four hours ago when this all comes to light. And that is no. hypocrisy no, at its not. best, in my opinion. No, because hashtag uh, take the piss, really. They, it, they, go, they, go, they, go, they, go, they go way over the top. We just want to show you a football game that obviously but why you can't make a game. Great. I don't know why the commentary. Why I just does it need yes. commentary? You, can, I, can I say something? If you're that... And this applies to hashtag you guys and anyone else. If you're that desperate at that level for people to see your game, if you're that desperate to share your experience with everyone, then let the fuckers in for free. <laughs> if you're that, that desperate, that's to, all work. these people so are like, I want to share it with you, on. but by the way, it's free or mine. We'll come to the ground and give us 25 quid. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Say you was running, say you was having the club out, which you won't do because you'd be on your desk. <laughs> How or can still have from a desk. How are you going to get like get money for the club? How's you're saying non-league clubs struggling to get money because all the Premier League sides are getting cash and Richard yeah, Scudamore's getting five million pounds for doing that. But so what you're doing all. isn't helping getting cash. I was just saying, it's, a, it's a free, massaging ego. A well, free, they, no, they, oh, look, it's all right over there. I might go and watch it instead. Of putting a free to YouTube video of essentially an amateur commentator. I don't oh, really see not? how that is. <laughs> I mean, it is going to depend partly on the commentary standard. Yeah, exactly. I, I, you I, might be good, you know. I don't know. And I have nothing to do with the club, and I have nothing against the club. I actually, you know, they're the nearest club to my home, so I'm quite happy with that. But I honestly believe it will end in disaster. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's a, it doesn't matter. What we have established, Craig, in the last sort of four or five hours of today is that you are a sneaky hypocrite. And an ego maniac. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, and I, 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 haven't been away, I haven't been all over Twitter. It's the first week I've been on Twitter for this. Uh, for the, and you, and you've really taken a stand down, haven't you? <laughs> I haven't really, I haven't really sent many tweets out. So people, you've been tweeting Talksport every time, Cody. <laughs> as I have today. As you have today, I've seen you, uh, Charlie. You've been tweeting uh, our favourite Welsh team, Unisidu. Yeah. And we'll make, we'll get to them later on because I'm sure they'll be in story of the week. All I'll say is, 
Dan and I haven't been hypocritical about it. I, we I, haven't I, done a rant on an episode of this and then basically supported everything that you ran. No, that's <laughs> different. That is totally different to what However, I do. Talking about hypocrisy. <laughs> Ooh, a couple of weeks ago, thank you very much, we were here. Yes, <laughs> we were. And we, <laughs> FA Cup draw was made. It was. And Charlie's. Are we not saving this for the FA Cup? No, we're going to mention it at again. every <laughs> possible point, don't you worry. Charlie mentioned that it might be a lovely idea for us to go Let's to a go non-league watch, game. Yeah. Let's go and watch one of the lower teams. Yeah. Give us support Let's to the Let's go and community. watch Haringey Borough. Yeah. We thought, great idea. But obviously, travel at that time. Yeah, was that was a sensible decision. But, but what was closer? Oh, Hitchin Town. And it got moved to Sunday. It was yeah, perfect. perfect. 12.45 kick-off. And, and then the following week, Sunday. we were set. He asked you to book the tickets. I paid for the tickets. You paid for the tickets. Yeah. You booked them. They were here. And then what does Charlie do? I can't make it. <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't realise I was also at a christening on the same that's, day. That's no, no, no. Let's let's get this out of the room. Out of the room. The reason that Charlie didn't come is for something that will appear on the channel at some point. Hopefully. Is we're planning to do. No, an, no, 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 no. Stop, yes. stop. Yes. We're planning <laughs> to do an old game series. So the old old football podcast does retro games. Exactly. So retro so football games, shall I add? All the old games, and our favourite at the moment is Pro Evolution Soccer 2. On the PS1. Which, which, bollocks, which hang on, which way. I own on the PS1. <laughs> and I've brought to Charlie so we could all enjoy <laughs> <laughs> So we could all enjoy the experience That's of true. it. And what happened in the week when we went here, Craig? Ooh, he started to play Master League. And he got for a fair few seasons. No, he did not. He did. I played seven games. And seven games. What we can all agree on is when we came back here for the first time afterwards and you'd suddenly gone from losing every game to winning four or five nil and putting off ridiculous efforts. One, two pass and the first shot was going just over the bar from 25 and, yards out. And Whoa, tried to well, claim, a tried to claim that he hadn't played it. No, okay. <laughs> I might have lied about that. <laughs> and but, nothing could be believed. But I didn't spend all of Sunday. I was genuinely you need a christening and by the sounds of it I missed what was a very he, good day he out. didn't play all of Sunday spend all of Sunday playing it but he did spend the time that we were at Hitchin playing it after his christening which would have finished no no no, no 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 I'm I not totally having that agree. that is ridiculous and no. the fact that today but no I, I would say in my defence admittedly you know I, I double booked myself but I did still give Craig the money and so in, effectively I've still given but, eleven pounds to a non-league he didn't football. go and get a programme and no, a no, no, and chips and a drink eleven pounds is better than no pounds surely so I'm still supporting the. Well, league the football. attendance officially was three thousand one hundred and forty-eight, and I'd like Hitchin Town FC to know it was three thousand one hundred and forty-seven <laughs> plus one dickhead who couldn't turn up because he was playing master. No, I was. <laughs> I wasn't playing master league. And we start off in the championship, and Norwich are top of the table with an exciting game. We finished four-three against Millwall. Was the last minute winner, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, they scored two in the last uh, couple of minutes. Five wins on the bounce. That makes it. Yeah. I think Charlie's completely zoned out. <laughs> um, we, we had quite a heated discussion just before we went on air. I'm not going to say what about and who it was involved, but it was quite humorous and I'm slowly going to come down. And it has been 45 minutes. <laughs> 45 minutes since Charlie took six ages to do the intro. <laughs> we started at 4pm. No. Uh, 10 to 9. No. <laughs> Sl- slight exaggeration, but not by much. No. <laughs> uh, other news, no, in, other news in the championship. There was a derby at uh, the weekend, Friday night. Uh, it was a Sheffield derby it finished nil-nil Dexter Blackstock had his penalty saved and, and no one was watching because of an FA Cup game we'll come to later yes we will <laughs> and did you know we went to an FA Cup game on the Sunday we <laughs> did and do you know who didn't turn up no who didn't turn up it was Charlie Betts oh, oh, but right, it's okay. okay he gave his 11 quid to non-league clubs <laughs> yeah, for the yeah, ticket for the community well, I, did. I did what a community man you are Charlie Betts <laughs> back to the championship straight to the players yeah. anyway yeah. Yeah. back to the championship there was a free all game between Burnham and Hull Che Adams yes. got a hat trick but I have to admit there was pathetic defending by Hull. Okay. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. I just think, yeah, yeah. Wasn't, yeah. wasn't the best defender by Birmingham. <laughs> no, clearly not. Uh, other championship news? Cody, you got any championship news? I have. Uh, Forest unbeaten in four. Up to seventh. Just one place off the playoffs now. Mm-hmm. And back-to-back wins for Villa, who Charlie yeah. was trying to sack Dean Smith before he'd had a game at the club. Well, no, yeah, no, that, that's that taken out of context. To be fair, I joined in. I just yeah, slightly played devil's advocate there. there we go. <laughs> I did say stick with him. And he's got a brilliant free win at Derby. And free new at Derby, who hadn't lost a few games before that as well. And obviously um, uh, West Brom got a good result against Leeds. A very good result. Oh, wow. Wow. Didn't expect that. They, I didn't. I have to just say one thing because people in, uh, people have in the past accused me of being biased towards Preston. Mm. Preston, Preston are unbeaten in six games. They won one nil Bristol City, and it looks like they turned the season around. And They're only two and points off the relegation. The though. reason I want to mention that is because when they were at rock bottom, I stuck with their manager. Yes, good point. Good point. Yeah. No, I agree with you on that. 
Um, we're going to quickly talk about League One and League Two, but there has been some managerial casualties. There so always are. Aren't there always are in the football league. So League One, AFC Wimbledon have sacked Neil Ardley. Yes, just, just after a win. Just not saying I agree with it, but that uh, that was not a surprise, was it? No, you know, I, I think if, I, well, Neil Ardley was one of the longest serving managers in the football league, and, and the longest serving player at the original Wimbledon. At the, as well. the original, the, the real Wimbledon, not uh, the one up the road in Buckinghamshire. But six years at the club, took, got him promoted from League Two to League One. I, I think it's just time to it needed yeah. something new. You've to got to have a look at what he's been working. I, I, oh, don't, yeah. I don't know the ins and outs of it, but I imagine their budget must be next to I had them to go down sort of because thing. they've got one of the lowest four budgets in the league. And if yeah. you've got one of the lowest four budgets in the league, there's every chance you'll finish in the bottom four places of the league. The only thing I do have against him is if he was the man signing uh, responsible for signing Joe Pigger, then he, <laughs> has, he has every right <laughs> to go. I know we're going to talk about the FA Cup later. How that man... Anyway, that was Joe Pigger. Well, yeah, might be the laziest footballer I've seen in the flesh. And for, if you're not extremely talented, you cannot be lazy. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, Shrewsbury have also, also sacked John Askey. John yes. Askey came there in the yeah. summer from, from, the, Macclesfield. from Macclesfield. He, t- he took them up to the football league. I bet Paul Hurst wishes he didn't leave, didn't he? Oh, no. <laughs> no, no um, I had Shrewsbury to go up, though. I've got to be honest. Yeah, so did I, to be fair. I thought they'd do well, but it just hasn't worked out. It's quite funny because, we, and to be fair, we often blame the clubs for sacking managers and things like that, but here we have instances of managers who chose to leave. Mm. So Paul Hurst chose to leave Shrewsbury to go to Ipswich, yeah. the league above, no on a lower budget. John Askey chose to leave Macclesfield after getting them promoted to go up a league to uh, Shrewsbury, and it's not worked out for either of them either. So, wait, and as, it's also, to be fair, the, the guy uh, went to Macclesfield, Macclesfield he's he's got 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 the I don't know where he came from, I'll have to hold my hands up. No. So. But the point I make with that is that we often criticise clubs, but the managers in this instance have arguably been just as guilty. Just because you're moving up a league, you have to be careful with the move. Is it the right move for you? That's, yeah. that's very true. Uh, league 2, Swindon also sacked Phil Brown. We all had him to go up, I believe. Yeah, we did. We did. I was quite surprised. And we all said the reason they got up is because they've got a nice steady manager in Phil Brown. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, no, no. That, no, no, uh, yeah, that I, didn't go well. So, you words on that. Uh, he's been replaced by the former older manager, Richie Willens. Which I don't think is a bad appointment. A young manager, fresh no. ideas. And he didn't what, do what, too badly. What, what was their rash- Was it just another generic statement? Like, what was the rationale for getting rid of Phil Brown? In the sense of... I, I'm been there a while, thing. dodgy start. Well, yeah, he only been there like, last season. Came for that, is he? Yeah, last season. I mean, you say dodgy start. start. I, you know, I agree that I was having the best run, but I mean, they're 17th on 21 points. Obviously, technically, I know results, a lot of results got to go their way, but one win, and they're back up to 11th, and only, they maybe what, four points off of the playoffs. Now, I know that's obviously an extreme circumstance, but... But what, really said, bad we, start? Well, we, that, take a side. They that. should be higher in, in our... Well, we is that a bad Seven start, points off the playoffs. Yeah, you know... But how close are they in at the bottom? Not yeah, very but, close, because Cheltenham and Macclesfield are marooned down there. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah Cheltenham on 11, so you're talking but, 10, 10 points off. But, oh, okay, fine. You know, far close to the playoffs. Yeah. But, and also, uh, we've got near to the bottom. Notts County have sacked Harry Kuehl. It's yes. their second dismissal of the season. Harry Kuehl lasted 10 weeks. Yeah. Well, they won uh, a few games, and now they've gone for Went a bit, bit of a bad run. Well, did go on a bad run again, and but he's gone. I don't think it worked out for him. But I did hear a rumour... Um, that Kevin Nolan yeah, big, might be Kevin Nolan big Kev back. might be coming back can I just, which is ridiculous to start with no, no I, disrespect to Kev but no, no disrespect to Kev I loved Kevin Nolan I love that Bolton side we've discussed it a number of times I've always took up Sam Allardyce <laughs> Kevin Davis Nolan a lot if he goes back there lost his spine I'm not happy with that oh. you know, do you think our friends we shouldn't he shouldn't go back is it still his team though do you think he looks at him and thinks well, you know, these, there's no, no, no that's what I mean well the board hang on three months ago or not even three months ago two months ago ten weeks ago well, was a, there was a little bit of a gap between. So, and most three months ago, mm. the board said that that team wasn't playing for him and that he had to be sacked. No, I'm sorry, sorry, no, sense. But I just thought, is there, is there an element of him that's a bit like unfinished business? Uh, the one thing well, you I can say for the club is, is you've realised you've made a mistake sacking him in the first place. Well, what a surprise, the club's made a hasty decision. Well, <laughs> obviously, that hasn't... That, I mean, he's making them rumour. I don't know if that's come true yet. Well, we'll have to wait and see. Maybe I hope Kevin week. Nolan rejects them immediately if they offer him a job. The thing is, who would they get instead then? You know, like who? That's not for Kevin Nolan to worry about. No, what I'm saying is, is no, John I'm Askey, talking generally. Like who? Phil you know, Brown. And, Brown would be and what show. would be unique? Steady manager Phil Brown. <laughs> what would be unique? <laughs> <laughs> be very unique if Kevin Nolan took the job. Is he'd be paying for being paid for the same job twice at the same time? He would have had a payoff for the rest of his contract Might this season. Back. I mean, in terms of business acumen. That's probably not the worst. <laughs> he will be getting paid for the same job twice at the same time. I mean, that's brilliant. No, that is, yeah, I'll give it that. And we move on to the FA Cup. And we start with the Friday night game between Harringay Borough and AFC Wimbledon. One of a couple of TV games this weekend it ended was. in heartache late on. Ah, uh, they were desperately unlucky, weren't they? Yeah, it's, it's uh, well, last minute goal, took a massive deflection. 
And Lovely ricochet, wasn't it? Oh. There was a certain AFC Wimbledon player that you didn't nah, do you know what like. Do you know what pissed me off for that? And I'm sure Dan's in the same camp as this. Like, I mean, he highlight, highlighted it to me more so, but he that bloke was a pigot, isn't it? The laziest player on the pitch. And I, you know, it annoyed me the fact that he scored. What annoyed me was the, the ego... Pigot didn't, didn't score, did he? Pigot didn't score, no. no who, did he not deflect it in? No. What annoyed me was the, the plaudits that he got from, uh, like, it was Kevin Kevin's Kilban, Kevin's wasn't it, and stuff. You know, he's worked his socks off and all this sort of thing. And it was just like... Let me stop you both there. Kevin Kilban in that that coverage really upset me. Yeah. Oh. Because right. what came apparent from it is that for a man who'd played most of his career in the higher leagues of yeah, the game, yeah. is that he, in at least recent times, hasn't got any touch with non-league football. No, no, no. He I was am. so disrespectful to the yeah. players in the non-league team. I and I appreciate um, they're a lower step than teams that are normally at that... Uh, Round of yeah, the yeah. Cup. but I found it very disappointing. I thought um, I thought the BBC done a really good job actually. The yeah, BBC yeah. and BT Sport coverage generally is excellent, and the BT games again at the weekend brilliant. But Kevin Kilban just annoyed me. Yeah, a bit, no, I do you know because the centre half for uh, um Kirby, 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 the teacher, yeah, yeah. 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 The but, that, but that's the thing. That's what annoyed me. He was referred to as the teaching centre half, and there was all these little things. The whole game, and he was the best centre half on the pitch. Oh, um, he had an unbelievable game. And I'll be honest, I'll be the first when I saw him come out. I thought he's going to get absolutely rinsed here because he wouldn't be the most athletic looking centre half. Let's mm-hmm. be agile, agile, throw the better way of putting it. But the whole game, he was referred to. You know, when he goes back to work on Monday, and he has to face the kids, and he's like, "No, he's, tonight he's a footballer." Just yeah, I appreciate he's done, that he's, he's done his job. For the day. I appreciate he's a part-time footballer, but he, in this instance, he's a footballer. Stop going on about the fact he's a teacher. And even at that level, he's probably earning a fair amount of money. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, <laughs> we won't go into how much, but <laughs> yeah. No, but do you know what I mean? It, it almost the de- not dehumanizes. That's too strong a word. But do you know what I mean? Dehumanizes. No, no, but. <laughs> No, what I'm saying is... You know we occasionally say that Charlie just starts <laughs> to, to, to go up. over the top and, you know, he doesn't know what he's going to say next, no, so he comes really. out with something... The <laughs> point I'm making is that he, he was, in my opinion, probably the best player on the park. Uh, maybe uh, again, the goalkeeper had a great game as well. He did have a good game. It just annoyed me that he wasn't treated, or not treated, he wasn't... Ex- you know, he was treated, he just, he was a treated as a footballer. Yeah, and yeah, a football game. Really, he was probably better than most players on that pitch, to be honest. That's but the good. goalkeeper, like, I think you said it on, on, on our WhatsApp group, if that goalkeeper could kick, he would not be anywhere near that level. He'd be playing so much higher. Do you think the conditions play a part? I don't know. He no. pulled off some absolutely I mean, He was a brilliant saves. goalkeeper, but he just couldn't kick. He couldn't kick the balls. balls. <laughs> I mean, but his goalkeeper's terrible. <laughs> can we talk yeah, about the other TV games? Uh, in a minute. Okay. No, now you can. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Saturday was one of the other events. Maidenhead continued their normal form. Portsmouth continued their normal form. 4-0 yeah. win. Uh, Port Vale Sunderland, the game that I believe Craig wasn't too happy about seeing on TV, <laughs> I, turned still... out to be a cracking tie. Sunderland took an early 2 0 lead. You thought they're going to run away with this. This could be any score. From that moment on, Port Vale mm. gave them a right game. It was an absolutely brilliant watch. Mm. And I watched it after coming back from Hitching Solihull Mills. Oh, yeah. And I'm sure Charlie would have watched it live because he wasn't at the pitch. Oh. No, he was. Yeah, he, he went at home. Was, uh, around that time, I think I was at the buffet at the christening. But Charlie <laughs> had just about stopped playing Pro Evolution Soccer 2 for the Monday night game. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I wasn't. <laughs> Play it. Joe, you can take it fucking back over here tonight because I'm, I'm, <laughs> I haven't been playing it anyway. A team that I said might pull off a shock in the first round and I believed it so much that I said it about three times when I listened back to the last episode. <laughs> but they were they were another team that suffered heartache in stoppage time against Oldham, Hampton and Richmond. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah that was excellent. They were absolutely brilliant that game. The mistake they made was taking the big target man off the experienced Dixon and mm. the ball just didn't stick after that. And I, it, I, I don't think it was a penalty for Hampton, but... Uh, probably you, you take every advantage of it and yeah. because of the penalty as well and obviously Brilliant. Oldham obviously done brilliantly to come back with two late goals Sh- other shocks in the FA Cup first round Maidstone beat Macclesfield not really a shock was it's it? a shock <laughs> <laughs> Maidstone in the National League Macclesfield in League 2 just, just. <laughs> one of the bigger shocks uh, should I say Geisley of the National League North nearly threw it away nearly threw it away they beat Cambridge United 4-3 well 4-1 up what? Four nil up. Four nil up. Well, we, we, we weren't too clear on that one because we were we were at Hitchin Solihull. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, oh, God. So, brilliant for them. Um, another game. Uh, Chorley drew two with Doncaster. Again, took place while we were at Hitchin. <laughs> 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 um, I just want to mention two things from that game. Uh, Wait, which one? Not Hitchin Solihull. No, I'll, I'll, get, I'll get to Hitchin. <laughs> we'll talk about that in a bit more yeah. detail in a minute. Uh, I just want to go to the Chorley game first. Uh, Doncaster's Herbie Kane scored an absolute weldy. Yeah, and I'm sure Charlie saw it going live on Football on Focus because <laughs> um, he was at home. Uh, absolute brilliant goal, but the tackle by uh, Chaloner 
on on Kane was absolutely horrible. I would have oh, I was at, I was at but you were no, yeah. uh, I did see the highlights that, like, that tackle horrific. was awful yeah, yeah. awful saying I don't know how he did. luckily he heard the game no I've got to be honest like, well, yeah, all joking aside that was horrendous that was which terrible. I saw the highlights of later on that I didn't see terrible. it terrible because you were too busy playing um, <laughs> other, other uh, FA Cup games big shock on Saturday yeah. Stop Port away at the Oval. Oh, yes, it the is. The one I predicted, and it finally came oh, did off. did you predict that? I did predict oh, okay. that. Did Thanks for listening, as usual. I only said that one once, which okay. is probably why I don't remember. No. Um, one more game against, uh, quickly to win the FA Cup, was uh, Hitchin Town. They played Solomon Lawrence. <laughs> <laughs> I believe two of us went to the game. Oh, Cody went for... to the game. Um, oh, not loud. But I, wasn't, it wasn't I the greatest I, I, of games. I, I, no, what was it like? I'm serious, no, because I haven't actually spoke to you about it. What was it like? It was a good experience. The ground, Hitchens ground top field was absolutely fantastic. It's lovely. I think you would know oh. if you were there, wouldn't well, you? Well, <laughs> either way, they're eleven pound better off whether I was there or not. That's it's the an old classic thing. ground. And um, the yeah, food, food, food was lovely. Food was great. Easy friendly get, staff. Friendly staff. Easy to park. Uh, hilarious ticketing system. Yeah, it took about five minutes for us to get in. Why? Uh, in they the, were doing the barcode scan, yeah, yeah, which I'm, I mean, at Luton Town they have a ticket stub. Why they couldn't have done that? I don't know. I guess they I probably they've never had to print that many tickets. No, I had to print it off. But um, you printed a, a scan ticket with a QR code, yeah. and they were trying to do it at the gate. And I mean, we went about an hour and ten minutes early so we could get some food, program, invest in the club, help them out. And <laughs> it probably took a combined there. four minutes for us to get through the gate. And realistically, when the crowd started to pile up, I can see why they said you need to get there more than 15 minutes before kickoff. Really? And obviously, because there's only turnstiles at one end of the ground, there's only four gates to get in. Oh, so, so, so it's a lot harder. Was he not scanning it, Glenn? Is that what it was? It, it, it was not reading it, it, sorry, was it? No, it, it, they were scanning it on their, like, their, no, on their mobile phones. phones. Oh, they didn't have a proper scanner already. Yeah, right. Like so we, uh, we eventually I mean, got a bit of food. We walked around, went by the dugouts. We saw the, B, uh, the BBC reporter that was doing the live game. Who, may I point out, for the first 12 minutes, I would estimate watched less than 30 seconds of the game <laughs> um, genuinely was just sitting scrolling for a phone unbelievable really? we saw we saw Tim Flowers your good reporter coach. though she did a game on Saturday really good reporter <laughs> genuinely she, she was pretty genuinely good there. Uh, the view we had was nice to be fair it was a good view um, going on for that game yes it wasn't the greatest of games uh, but Hitchin couldn't so, afford for it to be tough no Hitchin tried to do on the counter attack Tim Flowers gave him enough praise um, yes it was a penalty for the, for the first yeah, goal yes chance just it got tired they got tired after tired. an hour Second goal didn't come to them after that from Danny Wright. Um, Magical occasion, no segregation, the fans no, all together. It was a right. really good atmosphere. No troubles at all. 3,147 plus Seven, Charlie. Plus Charlie's, <laughs> plus Charlie's um, ticket plus Charlie's ticket. And but he still put his 11 quid in the club. But I have to give Hitchin <laughs> Town a lot of credit. They hosted superbly. We didn't get, it didn't take too long to get out of the ground. It was a fantastic occasion. Yeah, so I have to give him a lot of praise. Really well organised, supported by the council. Everyone yeah. did their best to make it a great day. And that's what the FA Cup's all about. And that's that's why two of us really support it. <laughs> <laughs> will, we, will, we, will we go to the I FA think, Cup game? I'm going to Berry v Luton in round two. Oh, I don't you think you're now. giving me the credit for the... No, the intent no. was there to go. That's the important part. You know, I still paid the money. The intent was there to go and two of us follow through. And I double booked yeah. myself. But the point being that but, the intention uh, was there. Yeah, uh, really well done, <laughs> uh, Hitchin. And uh, best of luck to Soy Hall Moors in the next round. And it's just caught my eye and I know it's completely off topic for the football but we're doing a football podcast and Charlie's wearing a cricket shirt. Just to, just to compound the... No, the and, 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 we have been tweet, and we have been tweeting the other cricket, not just the cricket podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that. No, it's just it's a nice England cricket top. I don't know what the issue it is. And this is a football podcast. Yeah. Wear a plain shirt or a football shirt. Hang on, when was that ever a rule? It's always, in fact, you, I've always gone. The first four weeks, you made me bring a football shirt yeah. just in case we can take a picture of it. Oh, it's got to be from at least I 10 years I would like to argue, I've worn a football shirt apart from two weeks. Once when I was late home from work and tonight. Every other time I've They're worn a football They're a bit tighter shirt. now, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that so, cricket shirt's not in baggy. It was that a is a large, summer. actually. I've got to be honest. <laughs> uh, going back to the FA Cup, we're going to talk about draws. It was an all, it's going to be an all Welsh derby. It is yeah, Newport that, yeah, for uh, Wrexham. Which Hopefully, is, they'll make an exception of that, that on BBC. It's, uh, no, it's on BT Sport. Oh, it is. It's on BT Sport at eight o'clock on a Saturday. That's where the problem goes. We've eight o'clock on, oh, on a Saturday. Go on, go I tell you what, click on the eye above to check out our evening kickoff rant, so we don't have to do it again because shocking. We've had plenty of discussion yeah. about that before. Uh, the other TV games were Guysley Fleetwood. Yes. Um, the other ones were quite good. That's a BT Sport and uh, Sorry Hall Moors Wimbledon is the BBC Blackpool, one. Blackpool. Oh, sorry, Sorry Hall Moors um, Blackpool. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think Wimbledon. Sorry Hall Moors Blackpool. That's have you, have you stolen Wimbledon. Charlie's notes? Sorry <laughs> Wimbledon. As well, I think for the first time ever, I've actually corrected you. Live on yeah. <laughs> um, one other thing oh, I, I would like to mention before that: there's some replays on BT Sport. Yeah, oh, right. Oxford City v Tranmere. Two really good games. A team that got good away draws. So as you mentioned, Oxford City are now at home to Tranmere. They've got a respectable draw at Prenton Park. And even though I don't. You know, I've had my issues with them this season. Salford got a good result away at Shrewsbury, which led to the manager sacking. Yeah. 
And they're going to be playing at home on BT as well. I think, so, they're, I think they're beaten, to be honest. I think there'll be two really good ties, and that's the most mm. important thing. The magic of the FA Cup is back. And I'll tell you what, in an international break, what a good chance for a non-league team and lower league teams mm. to get on TV. Yeah, the two the National Trojan. League games on the weekend on BT, which we'll mention later, and then two FA Cup replays in the midweek. Brilliant stuff. And now it's time for Story of the Week. For the first time ever, I think we've all got the same story for Story of the Week. I believe so. Uh, yes, yeah. This all started in the Women's Super League. Yes. Uh, with a referee, David McNamara, he's been suspended by the FA for 21 days. And he has official weeks. as well. For three weeks. For, for, for people who haven't heard the story, what has he been suspended for? He's, uh, for the FA term, he's not acting in the best interest of the game, which is the biggest sort of crap I've ever heard. Well, no, t- so what's he actually done? So he forgot his coin. Uh, so he decided what's next be- next best thing is to do rock, paper, scissors which I think is brilliantly improvised yeah I mean can but, I, can I, can I, can I, I, I've got one question ok this. go on how does it harm the game uh, it doesn't oh, yeah. it doesn't I mean well, I, I, I need to tell me what size of the pitch ironically at the day of recording of this I had to referee a school match this afternoon did you do it by rock, paper, scissors I forgot my coin oh. genuinely forgot my coin in there no. so I got a bit of grass you know the whole hand thing which hands that's in that's not acting in the best interest no. of the well that's the thing do I now get suspended from you know refereeing school matches for the next three weeks it's, it's absurd I, I think, I I think believe... you're more likely to get suspended from school teaching for being well, no. a school teacher <laughs> yeah probably yeah. <laughs> no but I can't believe genuinely given that there's other things that maybe we've mentioned there's other things in, in the game exactly that is, that someone's uh, even uh, Address this as a, an issue Richard, that needs Richard to be. Probably. Richard Scudamore is getting five million pounds. Oh, that's a whole different for doing something for the Premier League, and this guy's getting suspended. I want to talk career. a bit more about yeah. non-league and, and fined for mm. for getting his coin. A bit more about non-league. The last two weeks, we've had quite long discussions on this podcast. Two weeks ago, we were talking about the changing rooms debate. Yes, yes the we price were. of changing rooms that all clubs in non-league steps mm. uh, three and four, I believe it was, had been asked to invest and by March have plans in place yeah. for an upgrade to the changing rooms to meet a certain cubic square measurement. <laughs> okay. And then the week oh, after, we spent 10 minutes playing Guess the Fine, yeah. where we were working out some of the ridiculous fines you could get yeah. for some of the most trivial things you'll ever think about. And now this week, we're talking about an official who's been by- fined for 21 games for doing his job absolutely fine. Just for getting a coin. Yeah. He, but he did exactly the same thing. He got to the same outcome, absolutely yeah. fine. Yeah. It's not like you can go into the crowd and say, hey, well, let's spare one pound coin I can borrow no, just well, to flip it. it. Again, this is where I think it's, it, the, the context of it is so ridiculous. Where you know, It's just how political the game exactly. is. Exactly. It's a rule book. Think, yeah, oh, he broke I the think, rule. He hasn't got the coin, he broke the rule. Yeah. It doesn't matter he did something. He broke the rule. But you get other referees. I mean, I mean, more concerned commit. if he got his, got his card. I bet he got fined. I bet he got fined. He got fined for playing. Of course he got fined. I don't know what the fine is, but I'm assuming I can't believe, though, that, you know, that... I don't know off the top of my head, but if you look at Premier League referees who've been in trouble for various different things, you know, comments made to players, all this, whatever, they they definitely haven't been banned for three weeks. I, I swear like, I've what I mean is the context of forgetting a coin against an actual can we, misdemeanor. Can we, can is I swear Mike Dean forgot something one game. I can, I, be wrong. can I point out something that happened in Italy a few weeks ago? Douglas Costa in the same game spat on someone. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Elbowed That's someone true, yes. and headbutted someone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they weren't they're not like the oh we touched his head and then he went down. Yeah. They were headbutts and elbows. Mm. He got banned for three games. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Which is less than three no weeks. There's no there in that. Like, I think we eight game banned. No, he didn't. Oh. So, so three or four. Three or four. Sorry, what was the game. official line? It was not acting in the best interest of the game. It's a like the, in what no, way? What I mean is, yeah, exactly. Yeah, what, what, and sorry, the, guys. The statement okay. didn't expand on that. The statement no, didn't say why he hadn't acted in the best I mean, interest look of the game. Look at Graham Paul in the go back a little bit. World Cup booked the player three times. Yeah. He even he didn't get three weeks suspension. I know he got booted off or whatever, but yeah. you know he, did, when he, he went straight back into the Premier League or whatever. Yeah. How is that? And the thing that horrifies me Fair. the most is based on the fact that we established last week that you can get fa- uh, banned. What was it? Uh, fine, sorry, what was it? Five hundred pound for not having a match day program. Yeah. What is he going to get for not having a coin? Yeah. A well, program. That's... A program. I tell you what, that's just something for the spectators. So, a coin is essential and, to yeah, the interest so, of the and game. And again, it so goes I, back to what? Well, so just to no, go on, Charlie. So I was just saying, it just goes back to something we mentioned quite a few months ago about a lack of referees. And I'm not saying that this. Oh yeah, yeah so yeah. But how is this encouraging that's people? Not really encouraging oh, referee to, to become a referee and get involved. So, Unbelievable. Um, Dave McNamara, fair play for improvising. But the FA hang your heads in shame because that's embarrassing. Do you know what? Do you know what the shame is? I bet he would have got banned less if he hadn't turned up. If he'd realised in the car, yeah. I haven't got my coin and just went home, he would have got less. Probably, yeah. Less of, less of, and, and it's the same thing it. we mentioned last time, wasn't it? Yeah. About you get less of a punishment for starting with eleven, uh, wait, wait, ten wait, wait. players. You say get someone to go and do the program quickly. Exactly. Wait, 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 wait till you forget this pencil. Wait till you forget that. <laughs> well, that's the thing. What happens if you have a card or whatever? Goodness, you know what I mean? Can you imagine then? Oh. Like, 
Well, yeah, well, I know well, it's lower football, but they don't get something for the game. Let, let's be honest, the game's gone mad, yeah. but I'm sure Charlie will cheer us up with his weekly Unicity <laughs> review. Yeah, and now it's time for Unicity of the Week. Charlie, no, what see, happened in the world of Unicity? See, I don't, I, you know, this isn't like a stalkerish thing, but genuinely, every week, the last few weeks, they, it, they've had something happen that's been quite a monumental thing. I have had quite a, quite a story of the weekish season. Yeah, happened. to be honest, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, so they had their Welsh FA Cup last Saturday, and they were playing Monmouth, who... We're in Welsh Division 2, so the third tier of so Welsh football. Bear in mind, yeah, again, still semi-professional, uh-huh. you know, so at this stage. Um, and already beating a team from the league above that, so in the second division, you know, I think they're called the Welsh Division 1, but the second division of Welsh football in the previous round, they've now beaten them, Monmouth. They've got a draw against the Welsh Premier League team, who oh. are obviously semi-pro, but will be on more than £100 a game, um, and things like that, you know. So, the no, on a serious note, they're playing against uh, another team from the Welsh Premier League, who are obviously on telly and things like that over there. Mm-hmm. Just unbelievable for what is essentially an amateur village team. I really hope that game's on S four C, just so we can. Watch yeah, it. I don't. Know. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it'll be a half two on a Saturday, won't it? But yeah, I mean, they've also had Miss Anissa do, which we can't talk about here. But if you if you've got a Twitter, go and have a look at put in yes, hashtag uh, Miss Anissa do two thousand nineteen. It's, it's not something. We're say, it's not something we're saying we morally agree with. But <laughs> it has become quite a uh, I was, widespread I was quite event. Surprised <laughs> how it, uh, big dismissing this to do one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, no. Congratulations. And obviously, I think we mentioned before, but sadly, their under 18 team, which was yeah, a team that didn't exist, is no longer going to exist because they were beaten quite soundly. Hopefully, next season, might have a team. Well, maybe, but obviously, well, the story hopefully, was the money they get yeah. from this cup run might yeah. even be able to fund. So you yeah, to so for a, a, a village team, I think it's an incredible effort. Craig, you got a story of the week? No? No? <laughs> no is that, that was the <laughs> coin, that was oh, it. Okay, um, I've got one. Oh, no, sorry, Craig, I do have a story of the week. Oh, was it? Would you, was it um... oh, I think it, it goes back to the weekend. Oh, what <laughs> well, happened last Sunday? Oh, for Christ. Something happened know. last Sunday. It was going on. I went about... to a christening last Sunday, <laughs> if that's any good to you. But what did you bought a ticket for? Was it a christening or was it a, <laughs> was was it it a magical cup, FA Cup tie that you yeah. suggested we go to? Yeah. I just can't uh, remember. Right, I remember What's your other story of the week? I'm going to talk about a team that got expelled. Expelled. Expelled oh, from uh, the league. So, uh, AC so don't London... forget to hand a team sheet in. <laughs> no, 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 no. So AC London. Um, AC London. AC London. They're in the. Combined... I mean, that's an ambiguous name. I don't know. I'm too entirely sure I agree with that. Is that Athletic all. Club? Uh, I don't know. But they're from the Cumberland Counties uh, League Division One, which is Step Six. Right. Okay. Um, they're currently fifth in the league. Played fifteen league games. They've been expelled. So this happened over the summer. Um, what well, the incident was in the summer that's caused it? Yeah, so okay. I think the league kicked them out in the summer. Right. 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 <laughs> okay. Uh, for some reason. I didn't know notice what... they were playing for 15 no, 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 no. <laughs> right. Hear me out, hear me out. So they got, they got kicked out for a certain reason. That team appealed. Yeah. But a- they, AC London. Or AC London appealed. Oh, yeah. and it went through a... Oh, right, okay. It went through... Uh, they had an, e- an EGM, which is an emergency general meeting about this. Right. Then they had the AGM. Which they had to... Yeah. But the appeal process took so long... It, for the FA, it only took them last well this week to actually make a decision. <laughs> and they, they, the and now the, the thing is, they're keeping the league to, um, just because we're waiting for this appeal process because right. this uh, genuinely. genuinely. So why is it taking so long oh, for the awesome. FA to make this decision? Genuinely, they play 15 league games? because from start to finish, they have written a ruling for all step three and four clubs to have dressing rooms. A certain <laughs> <square feet. So laughs> this is that started six. and finished during that time. No, yeah. but I'm saying the FA during that time have started and finished Spent that process that. and what and needs to be finding referees. Finding referees. So the FA. Uh, what do you think? That David McNamara thing I'm, I'm, was I'm, done I'm within 24 to... hours. Yeah, exactly. that's true. That's, that's, that's the women's league, though. No, but it's the point you've made. I know it's huge league. Yeah. So. I'm going to read a little bit of statement from the FA. Submissions were made at the initial appeal hearing that the FA thoroughly investigated. They have found these submissions to be completely false. So they've been and written off. and ri- written evidence to be uh, to have been fabricated from the team. The evidence from the team. From the team. Oh yeah. my gosh! So they made up their so evidence, the and it's taken them four yeah. months to yeah. work out. So that the it's FA completely has now fabricated. faced severe sanctions against the perpetrator of these false. Act, um, what have they done though? I tried to find a research on that. I couldn't actually find it, but they, I think it might have been discipline. It might have been some. Oh, other we've got a new weekly story of the week. <laughs> AC London, right? It seems so, um, to the FA rejected their appeal. Yeah, and they've been. Um, they, well, they said the combined counties they acted uh, fully in line with their procedures, so they've been kicked out. But looking at the FA full time website, they're still um, their uh, team still in the league table. They're still the so this, this... but their game at the weekend against Chessington and the Hook. I think that's the name of the team. Yeah. Um, it's still appearing there. And considering it's, well, at the time it's recorded, it was Thursday, 
this this game surely can't keep going ahead if they expel this team. So this is the usual thing that you get in lower but league football. Why is it, why is it taking team, so long? Where a team leaves and it completely messes up the league because well, you had to, some teams you've played them, some that haven't, and it throws the whole league on its head. Well, 15 league games, it's the fifth in the table. It's but, yeah, I'm not saying let's stick up with it. We, we don't, shouldn't have taken that long. However, we, I suppose if they're innocent until proven guilty, aren't they? Well, we yeah. can't yeah. comment if you're on that. Um, go on. Falls fight. Like submissions, yeah, 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 but we can't yeah. comment on the decisions and that because we, as we said, we haven't been able to follow so up. My gripe is why is the FA taking so long? My, my problem is when they say they've acted, they've done a thorough investigation, just basically means they've done a belated investigation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what annoys me. It should me. never have taken this long, but like you say, I think just to hit the nail on the head is that it takes them 24 hours to find a referee for not and, and ban a referee for not having a coin. It takes them more two, money two that. weeks to sort out a changing room. It, and it's know, taking them four months. I imagine if you forgot a program, you'd definitely know about that that week. You know that fine would come that week, and yet it takes them what was it, fifteen I'm games? I'm presuming they don't. since June, really, since it's, uh, when the AGM, the constitutions for these leagues get sorted out. I'm presuming they don't make any money from expelling a team. <laughs> no, that's probably it. No, I agree. Oh, yeah, the league probably would. But the FA, no, 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 the FA would have found the person that. Uh, falsified all the documents. Yeah, but I, I imagine it to be. Yeah, I can. I get you coming from there. The money side of it. Shocking. That is terrible. That's a, that's quite a sad note to end the story of the week. Oh, on sorry, mate. We always. Uh, end, well, no, there was no story. We always end it on negative. And now we move on to our non league review. And the National League was no games on uh, due to the FA Cup games, but, there but are I've got stories. I've got something from the National League. And um, you can tell us what. That and is. it involves our podcast favourite Morgan Ferrier. So I don't know if you. I, I was going to ask you earlier if it was Morgan yeah. Ferrier. Of course it is. I don't What's know if you remember Ferry months done? and months and months ago. Uh, his, he, he had an agent you know he was signed sorry he was at Borenwood he had an agent and basically the agent tried to agitate a move out of the club oh yes and the club went quite public about it to say look at this level this is non-league football still this shouldn't be happening you know etc etc he tried to say that they had made a breach of contract and to cut a corner he was like you know if you if you sell him now at a reduced price we won't mention the fact you've and obviously the club reviewed their contract and was like no this is watertight mm-hmm. but, you know um, eventually now this is the bit I couldn't work out if it was the same agent who then got in the move to Walsall because yes. he's now currently at Walsall because you watched him a few weeks ago and said he did absolutely nothing um, correct he has had a good season though, yeah right? yeah and to be honest they, they had a hashtag on um, Twitter called football must win no go with me go with me and it, it built up quite a following um, what they now so said what was that again? football must win oh okay good. Yeah. did you have that sitting next to you while you were playing Pro Evolution no <laughs> Even no, on a serious note, they've um so everyone thought that was it. The matter put to bed. You know, this bloke had been you know sort of they basically complained to his agency saying we don't want anyone. You know, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, what's actually happened now is the agency, elite agents, um, have now tried to get m- damages out of Bournemouth of a quarter of a million pounds. Oh, that's a lot. Of money. So uh, Bournemouth claimed two hundred quid worth of admin fees and all of that to obviously go to court and do all of this sort of stuff with it. So Bournemouth got two hundred quid out of this agency. Bear in mind that. You know, these agents have players in, not a, the elite agency doesn't have Premier League players, but you know, League One, League Two. So yeah, they're going to be yeah, worth. I'd like to hope it has elite players. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, do you know what I mean? So, but yeah, I just think it, it's it's terrible that in non league football, we're at this stage now where A, you had that whole business before, but now that someone has the audacity to try and find a, a club like Bournemouth a quarter of a million pounds. That's a lot of money. And Probably their, their annual ticket range. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it, it, it all comes from some young agent who... I, and I still, we still don't really know why. Because Morgan Ferrier had an agent. And then literally the week before this agent tried to get a move to Tranmere um, he changed his agent and nice something. nice to know that he's hiding his name behind elite agency who yeah. probably most of the people there are decent hard work yeah, they're exactly. going to get an awful reputation yeah, yeah, it, which is wrong it's just so they tried to claim damages of a quarter million pounds which again it's just something that we seem to be talking a lot about money and, and football and all of that recently but it, it's just another and example of I can, ass- I can assure football. you by the end of the season there will be an agent's midweek run yeah, yeah no but I think I just think the fact that that's happening, you know, that story wouldn't necessarily be out of place in the Premier League, but the fact that this is happening in the National League now, this sort of stuff is just it's fucking ludicrous, to be honest. Couldn't agree more. Uh, moving on to the National League North, there were a few games on. Slightly um, reduced programme, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, Bradford Park Avenue are now top of the league, that, even though they've uh, already got a couple of games. One hell of a shock. What? But they're top of the league. One hell of a shock. Okay. Uh, they got a point against Curzon Ashton. They did? Um... Yeah, that's where I got from. <laughs> <laughs> I've got quite a bit, actually. Go for it. There were some midweek games. Yes, they were. And there were well, just two, two midweek games and about half a programme at the weekend. Um, Hereford played at home on Saturday against FC United of Manchester, a team we all tipped struggle and are not yep. doing great themselves. No. Uh, they lost 3-1 at home. Mm. And then on Tuesday night, they played at home to Southport, who have had quite a poor season. 
despite their FA Cup run, hadn't had a great time in the league, and they lost 3 0. And Hereford are very much struggling now. And what did they do a bit earlier in the season? They've got a head of football. Oh, really? got but the what did, they, man. did they sack the manager that had gone three promotions in three years? They did, I'm pretty yes. sure they did, yeah, didn't yeah, they? And yeah. how's that worked out for them? Because yeah. it was a disappointing start when they were in there. Yeah, that's right. Well, yeah. now it's a disappointing season without <laughs> it, isn't it? Well, they've got their mighty man in. And, uh... <laughs> One thing we know is even when they go down to the nor- whichever Northern League they're in, they yeah. will have, Northern Premier, I think, they will have a cracking set of football. Yeah. <laughs> well, we've always stated. Head of white football. Yeah. Uh, on to the National League South and um, St Albans' is form. It's three straight losses now. They lost to Dulwich, Chippenham and Torquay in midweek. Yes. Mm-hmm. Hasn't been a good week for them. Uh, it was a cracking game uh, on Wednesday. Yeah, you mentioned it on right, didn't you? Gloucester City. Gloucester City. Gloucester was, came from 3-1. I was talking, speaking to you during yeah. the game because they were 3-2 up with about three minutes to go. And, then and the keeper, the I mean, he didn't quite do the cross term, but it resembled Allison in yeah, trying to yeah. be a bit too clever. The, the midfielder it was closed him down and nicked a 3 or result and I didn't see anything after that and then I looked at the result this yeah, morning 4-3 four three. Four three. Three. and when your luck's out your luck's out yeah. and they're really missing that guy who was their manager and then the one who was their head of football <laughs> and all the rest of them, so. uh, Dartford 1-3-2 against uh, Oxford City Another on very Tuesday good game. so uh, the boys are in playoffs <laughs> again and uh, just one thing from the south I mentioned before about low scoring leagues in this one this was a very high scoring week in the games that mm. were there at the weekend four games we had 3-1-2-1 2-3 two, three, and 3-3 three, three. Wildston Bath cracking game for him Wildstone mate Wildstone <laughs> how many times so Wildstone oh. Wildston v Bath was pretty yeah. long yeah. Um, on Sunday we had a game yeah, Obviously, we didn't get to see the results after because we were hitching Hitchin V-Solo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were. God. Oh. Uh, Truro, at home to Dorwich Hamlet. Another one that I can't pronounce. Yeah, right. There you go. No, Dorwich Hamlet's fine. Uh, yeah, good. 3-2 win for Truro, good. which I thought was a bit of a surprise because uh, we've mentioned good. before about them playing miles yeah. from home mm-hmm. and hopefully going back and all those bits. You mentioned the Torquay one, which I was going to mention. Hemel Hempstead. Yes. Tuesday night, lost at home to Wildston. <laughs> That's Wheelstone. It's Wheelstone. <laughs> we all know it's Wheelstone. I'm going to get the radar on you, by the way. <laughs> and Con- oh, just the one. And Concord Rangers, they won 3 0 home to Eastbourne. They're having quite a good season. I've mentioned them before, having Jack Midson up yeah. front. I think they'll do all right. I think they'll get in the playoffs, Jeez. to be honest. Yeah, definitely. I was going to make a joke there, but I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And even if he had it, wouldn't have made the other, <laughs> so you'd never <laughs> have known. <laughs> no, uh, other than these, some sad news. Um, Winslow United of the Spartan South yes, Midlands League Division yes, 1. So. one. Uh, I'd love to know the rationale of these people. Yeah, I don't but, they, say, but basically, a um, little bit of a robbery on a little so, bit of a robbery. A little bit. They, they, so they the nicked pitch, the nets and the goals and the nets, churned up oh, the goal the area. The and is, when I say churned up, I mean like a oh, proper like the John Deere tractor yeah, t- churning up it. It's like moles yeah. are just completely ruined. It's an absolute disgrace. And, Although um, I will say, because they're a really good crowd. Yeah, but the football community has come around. I think already they've raised quite a few. Yeah, people have done it. Got a few grand already. It's gone. It's nearly three grand now. I think. Not as much as Premier League clubs have raised for Richard Scudamore. No, no, no. Fair play to them for bringing. It's a nice club. Hopefully, well, the game at home this weekend has been called off, which is sad. Um, one other bit of news from non-leagues. Obviously, a few weeks ago, I mentioned a story about Obi Town. Oh yes, oh, yeah, we I'll need that bit. Guys, hear about this. And do you know what's do you know what's really annoyed me about that? I followed their Twitter after that, so I could keep up to yeah. date. What's and I don't know if it's just my working patterns or whatever, but I have not seen any news <laughs> at all <laughs> for a week. I'm deliberately not clicking so on their profile have... because if they'd have gone if they'd have gone bust, that would have been bigger news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm presuming that hasn't happened. So they've got a statement keep... out, and then there's nothing else. I will it's keep up, and I will get you a very full review of that next <laughs> week, <laughs> so we don't have to listen to another 10 minutes about Unisadu who I like no, no but we want to keep Charlie yeah, out of the political rounds of talking about Miss Unisadu basically, <laughs> basically guys at Unisadu Charlie wants a shirt no 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 my dad That's doesn't involve it I'm going to go and we will come to a game at some point this and, season and I want to manage you on Football Manager next year <laughs> so you heard it here first boys Question of the daytime. It's currently Cody five, Charlie Vets two. Uh, Some I, may say an unassailable lead. Yeah, it's <laughs> a stretch now, and I, I don't think Charlie will catch up. So today's question is: Who attended the game between oh, Hitchin Town and sake. Solihull Moors on I'm not Sunday? even bloody answering. I, I had a question of the day too. If, if anyone's in the Hitchin area, can you find Charlie Betts? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know where he is? Because we were expecting to see him at the oh, game, and God. he went missing for four days. We I gave done. you four, four or five day notice. I even paid you the money for it. I still didn't go, but I paid you the money. That, look, it's right. not, that's not our question. Of what day. is the actual question? The actual of the day? question. I've probably got a better chance of getting that one right. Now. The fucking way you're going to give me because you're going to read it in like you've certainly got a better chance of getting a question of the day right. You have a turn up at Hitchens, <laughs> <in> now. <laughs> 
Well, uh, well yeah. Here's, here's right, a real question. Right? Can we do this in English this week as well? Not like <laughs> fucking Spanish or something like that. The way Can you, you ask it the way you did last week? So <laughs> yeah, perfectly fine. Right. Cool. So, who was the first Englishman to score at the new Wembley? Oh, that's a good question. Oh, that's a very good was question. It, was it the under twenty ones? I'm sure they played there first. David, uh, not Bentley. No, I went to an under twenty ones game just after I opened. Who's well, I'm going to cut you off right there because it's currently now Cody five, Charlie Betts three. Was so it Bentley? It was David Bentley. Oh, they played Italy, didn't they? Yes, they did. It was a free. Game. I remember that. It I remember was, that. Was it, oh, good goal. Free it kick. Free kick. Free yeah. kick. Yeah. I was watching it at Crawley. That's why. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I thought he was drunk. Yeah. Do I get a point for that? Do I he get gets a, one for the hitching? Do I get a point for knowing who was at hitching? <laughs> and the fact that I've also found Charlie Betts. <laughs> <laughs> Seven three. <Yeah. laughs> no, I vaguely remember that so, one. So yeah, Charlie Betts is right. It is uh, Cody five, Charlie Betts three, and that is it for today's show. Join us again on Tuesday for another midweek rant. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and tweet us on at Honest Football Three, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>